New tonight, insiders speaking out about safety concerns within one of the area's largest jails, all due to a staffing crisis they fear is only getting worse. The Prince George's County Jail has lost more than 130 officers in the past three years, nearly a third of its force. And tonight, six Prince George's corrections officers are speaking exclusively to investigative reporter Tracy Wilkins about why their jail is losing more officers than others in our area and why they say that puts their safety and that of the people held inside the jail at risk. Tracy. Well, Leon, this is a jail that largely houses people awaiting trial, but these officers tell me the staffing problem has them routinely operating on maximum security, like a prison. Just this past Father's Day weekend, jail officials confirmed Visitors were not allowed inside due to staffing shortages. And take a look at some of these weapons that were recovered during a recent sweep with one officer telling me that as terrifying as these handmade weapons are, it's a sign of how unsafe the people kept inside must feel too. Most of us don't think about what happens inside our jails. Separated by brick, steel, and barbed wire. For those of us on the outside, it's out of sight, out of mind. But some of those charged with keeping order inside the Prince George's County Department of Corrections say what's happening inside their jail desperately needs attention. It's a runaway machine and we don't have the wheel anymore. The News 4i team recently sat down with six Prince George's County Corrections officers fed up and speaking out over what they say is a staffing crisis that's compromising security. Not just with the staff alone, even amongst the inmates. They don't feel safe like they used to be. All were speaking to us under the protection of their union rights and say they don't represent jail leadership. One is a former officer, the other five still work inside the jail. Some have been there for decades. I could have retired seven years ago, but my thing is I love the people, I enjoy the people. Everybody can't do what we do. But they say things have changed since they first joined the profession. We're speaking out um, due to the safety and the concern for our members. There's a real reason for concern. Through a records request, the News 4i team obtained these pictures of weapons recovered from the jail during a February sweep. Metals ground to arrowhead points, plastic shivs with bedsheet handles, weaponry formed from whatever inmates could smuggle or find. What are your thoughts when you saw what these detainees were making in their jail cells? Terrified. Yeah. Right. We had seen them before, but not, at, not, as much. not this quantity of them at one yeah. time. In a statement, jail officials said routine shakedowns are a common practice and confirmed this two-week sweep yielded 66 weapons. A total of 47 inmates were charged for violating departmental rules. It signaled how unsafe they must feel. We just don't have the staff to maintain that security. Records obtained by News 4 show correction staffing is down in every local jurisdiction we asked. While D.C. did not respond to our request, records show Montgomery County's Department of Corrections lost 17 positions since the start of the pandemic and now has openings for 30. Fairfax has lost 58 staffers in that same time frame and now has 84 openings. But we found Prince George's County lost more officers than anywhere else, with staffing shrinking from 446 in 2020 to 310 this year with 176 open correctional positions. Do you feel that you have that many people missing? Yes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. They're going to a lot of different jurisdictions. So what does that say? It says it's not the profession. It's not the line, the job. It's our county in particular. They say the shortage has led to fewer officers on the floor and forced overtime. We're working 16 hours. A day? Yes at least half of your days, if not more. And some, some of the residents do take advantage of that. In the past year, the jail has had a series of troubling incidents. Last June, an inmate was stabbed to death inside the jail. And in December, four inmates were sent to the hospital after a physical altercation. Two had reportedly been stabbed. Stefan says he feels especially worried for inmates held on nonviolent charges. Should they come in and feel like their lives are threatened and, and not safe, 
simply because we, we're understaffed. Prince George's County Corrections declined our request for an interview, but in a statement said, mandatory overtime is sometimes necessary to ensure the jail is appropriately staffed and the safety of inmates and employees is maintained. It also said it will continue to conduct routine shakedowns throughout the facility to maintain everyone's safety. Being a correctional officer, even in the best of times, is very draining. Faye Taxman, director of George Mason's Center for Advancing Correctional Excellence, says jail staffing nationally has always been lean, but is now suffering from a number of factors. You have people who are retiring out of the system. You have people who do not want to work in that environment. Like other experts we spoke to, Taxman called for reducing jail populations, but also increasing pay and supports for officers. Why should people care about this issue? 20% of the American population has had some experience with the criminal legal system. A lot of people are impacted now. Veteran officers like Brad worry that unless something changes, the Prince George's jail will become a rotating door, not just for inmates, but officers too. The younger officers coming in the door, I would tell them things are gonna get better. I've stopped telling them that. Yes. I can't tell them that anymore. We've asked the Prince George's County Jail how many times it's been on lockdown this year. They told us we have to submit an open records request to get that information. We're still waiting on their response. In a statement, Prince George's Corrections also told us they've been aggressively recruiting through career fairs, school visits, community events, social media, and word of mouth, and are offering a sign-on bonus of $3,000 for new officers, which will increase to $5,000 next month by comparison. The county approved sign-on bonuses of $10,000 for new police officers. Mm. Tracy Wilkins, News 4 I team. I mean, that is a crisis. Shocker. Sure. Just a shocker. Mm -hmm. Tracy, thank Thanks, you Tracy. so much.